Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and we're back utilizing the Chirp wireless device. And I just wanted to go through some of the basic steps as far as getting this thing set up. Now, previously, I just wanted to make sure the thing was not DOA, right? I want to make sure everything is working before I go and mount it up on my roof. But at a certain point, they're requesting that they show you provide proof that it's on a roof or at a high point, securely, safely, and all that good stuff before you can even activate. Now, that's a topic for a different day. We're just focusing on the basic setup process. So I actually have the documents pulled up here and I'm gonna link it down in the description. It's docs.chirptoken.io and I'm on the Blackbird registration, right? The basic registration where it says, you know, once it's powered on, connect to it. Now I am connected two ways. I am connected via ethernet to my basic network as well as I found the device. You can see that your device name and when you click on connect, the name itself is the Wi-Fi password, right? Now, obviously you wanna change that at some point in time, but to get connected to the device and go through the basic steps, this is what you wanna do. Now it says that you wanna be about five meters away from the box. This computer is clearly more than five meters away from the box, um, but I just wanted to show you the basic steps. I would do all the setup process right there on my laptop next to the unit or on my phone next to the unit. But we are connected as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. And if we scroll down, Step two, open the gateway's access point in your browser, right? So there's an IP address, right? And we want to identify what that IP address is. Um, now, once successfully connected to gateway's Wi-Fi access point, uh, open your internet browser and type the following IP address in the address bar. Now, that's the IP address they give us. If you want to know what yours is, you can always click the little I right here. It's going to open up a window, and it will give you the IP right here, okay? So same IP address. So now we can open up our different browser and go to that address, set your password, give it something, make it something strong, and then you're gonna to need to agree to terms and conditions. We're gonna set password. All right, password set, and then we choose our primary connection type. Are we gonna do Wi-Fi, Ethernet, whatever, right? So right now we're, we are connected uh, via Ethernet. Um, in this case, we could choose Wi-Fi, but if we choose Ethernet, um, which is probably what we're gonna do for the roof setup anyways, because uh, Wi-Fi, while I have pretty good Wi-Fi, is probably not strong enough to reach all the way up there. We can just do it a number of different ways. So connection settings, Wi-Fi or Ethernet only, internet connection check, frequency plan, so on and so forth. So next, DHCP or static IP address. I like to set mine on static, but you set it up however you want. Leave it on DHCP. Disable, uh, disabling will ignore DNS servers uh, advertised by the router. So we're just going to leave it on DHCP, maybe do some adjustments later on. Please wait while we're checking the internet connection. And it goes through all this on the docs, right? Like it goes through this, right? And this particular guy, they set up Wi-Fi, so on and so forth. It's connecting, it's checking the internet connection. Then we gotta select our country or region. We're waiting on that success. Frequency plan, because I am here in the US, we're gonna make sure that we choose that particular one. You can see here, select country. I confirm that, yada, yada, yada. More terms and conditions as that continues to load. Again, because I am more than five meters away, that's why it's taking longer, which is why they recommend not doing this so far away from the machine. I said, we select the country. Um, I did disconnect the ethernet because it was just causing too much trouble. So we need to look for a specific the region, United States of America, US 915. I confirm I've chosen a country where the gateway is located. Acknowledge that the countries have different rules applicable to the radio band and gateway. If I choose the wrong country, I may be in breach of local legislation i further agree uh, to identify and hold the manufacturer seller and the respective affiliates harmless in case i choose the wrong country and thus violate applicable law so choose the right country firm all right uh let's see here view detailed uh regional parameters of the frequency plan eight channel 15 channel 65 so on and so forth this is this is low rate public I'm going to leave that on default, but the documents does have some additional information if we really absolutely, absolutely need to, but we're just going to leave that alone. But if you are interested in learning more about the uh, sub plans or sub channels, uh, sub bands, I don't know why I keep saying that, uh, I will link to this uh, article or FAQ that I found online specifically for the USA. So you just got to choose whatever's uh, your country, so on and so forth. And now it's time for uh, registration. But before you do that, make sure to update your Wi-Fi password. Uh, if you click the little link up here towards the top, it takes you to this page. Login username is admin and then the password that you set earlier. If we hit login, we can go ahead and save that to our browser or 
don't save it at all be secure use pass key whatever you want and now we're inside the actual Wisgate edge pro which is the actual device that chirp wireless is using so we need to change that wi-fi password you can see we're connected over the ethernet and it gives us our local ip for this particular lan or local area network and we need to update the password for this particular guy so there's three different menus over here on the left hand side where you can manage the settings of each network if we are connected we could choose dhcp or static if we wanted to change that we certainly could do that and then in the wi-fi settings we're going to go ahead and change the password right so the password as you saw, was the exact same name of the device. You do not want to do that. Now there's different uh, WPA, PSK, uh, PSK uh, mix mode. I'll leave it on that, but definitely change that password to something you prefer and don't let anybody else know what it is. Um, just make sure you back it up somewhere securely. You could also hide the SSID if you wanted to. You could leave it on auto channel or choose a particular channel. If you have like Wi-Fi man or something and you know what your network uh, like your overall like neighborhood network is and connectivity and all that good stuff, you know, obviously you could pick the best channel if you are familiar with that. Changing network configuration may take a few minutes. It might be necessary to reload the page and reconnect or disconnect, so on and so forth. Don't forget, you just changed the Wi-Fi password, so you might have to go to that network and then right-click forgot or forget and then reconnect, and you should be good to go. Let's see if the dashboard comes back. There it is. All right, everything is connected. We're good to go there. We could go to the cog wheel. We got reboot, reconfigure, reset. We could even change the gateway name. No, we can't for some reason. Anyways, frequency plan. Uh, if we needed to change our country, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to leave it alone. I don't know why I was talking like that, but now we are connected and we are good to go. We're on the Wisgate uh, device. Inside the user preferences, we could change the password and even change the um, time, right? So I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm America, American, uh, New York. If I could find New York, where's New York? New York, where you at? There it is. All right. Uh, and save that. So now my uh, browser and everything will be synced up with my time zone uh update the password as i mentioned also under here we could always log out but then if we go to the home page we're going to continue on with the registration but see additional information of course for you it's blurred out you can't see it but eight channels 915 mac address cellular lan interface all that good stuff so let's continue on with the registration steps click register and according to the documentation um does the same thing but we need to step nine log into your trip dashboard account log into your trip dashboard account you already have it we should already have it if you don't have it already. Um, I logged in a specific way, right? And you could choose your Gmail. You could choose whatever you want, uh, so to speak. But you should already have your dashboard set up. If not, go ahead and sign up. You just need to click the sign up button and then put in your email password twice. Your name, uh, optional, last name, optional, agree to terms, privacy, probably all that good stuff. Or you could sign in with your Google account if you choose to do so. But that's all on you. Just make sure you sign into your dashboard. If you choose Google, you just select your Google account, then accept terms and privacy policy, hit continue. Confirmation link sent to your email. You just need to go to your email and click the link. You only got two minutes to do so, so make sure you do that real quick. And your email is successfully registered. So we could go back to the dashboard or maybe refresh our page. Let's go ahead and refresh. Once verified and you did all the, the, the steps to complete the email registration or verification, um, to get back, just go to chirp. Uh, wireless.io click login you'll see it right behind me in the top right hand corner just click login takes you to this page where you can log in however you did it whether you did it through google or through your email so we're just going to click on in this case sign in with google and here is the dashboard so uh we got to continue on through the registration steps to see what it says here so we're signed in after signing in, you'll be prompted to name your gateway for com your convenience. So I want to probably go back to the device, um, the IP address of the device that we were connected to. So let me go ahead and grab that. All right, clicking back on register, which is going to take us to a page. There we go. There we go. So gateway private name, we want to give it a name um, for us, right? Obviously, this is our private name, not the, uh, the rest of the world's private name. So just name it whatever you want. Then we need to add your wallet to for rewards. So we need to connect wallet. There's a number of different wallets that you can choose. I have the Suet wallet, but you can use Sue, Ellie, Ethos, Frontier, Glass, Morpheus, Nightly, One Key. There's all kinds of different wallets. Uh, but in this case, just choose the wallet that's best for you. And for some reason, my Suet wallet's not working. So maybe I'll just try the Sue wallet. So get. And we need to download the extension. So add to Chrome. All right, add extension. And you're probably going to get prompted with a 24 word 
seed phrase, 12 to 24 word seed phrase, just follow the normal process to go ahead and, uh, you know, back up your wallet, make sure the seed phrase is safe and sound and good to go. Now it looks like we can connect through Google or more options. Let's see here. We can set up with Ledger. We can create a new passphrase account, imported passphrase, imported private key. A lot of good options here. I'm probably going to choose a Harbor wallet. So I'll probably bust out the old dusty Ledger and go from there. I'll bring you back in a second. If you do wind up using the ledger, just quick update, you need to go to my ledger or whatever the new word is for it now, because you need to manage your ledger and actually add the Sioux network to it. So we're going to go ahead and install that. And our ledger will be the one controlling uh, this particular wallet, even though we'll be able to manage it or connect via browser extension. So just let that rock and roll. Uh, because you're using a hardware wallet, you should already have your seed phrase backed up. But whichever route you go, just make sure you back up your stuff, your private keys, your seed phrase, whatever it might be. Continuing on, we got it now installed. So set up with Ledger, continue. The device shows up. If I move out of your way in the top right, you just got to click to allow. There you go. Paired, connect. And it's going to search for accounts and connect. But because I am connected to it on Ledger, it's giving me a hard time. So let me go ahead and fix that. So I just needed to select the Sue app on my actual hardware wallet, which I did not do. Uh, put in a password, uh, auto lock timer, whatever you want. You could change that if you need to one hour, day, minute, so on and so forth. I like to set that a little bit shorter, 15 minute uh, lock time, because uh, I don't really transact too much on sue right now maybe i will in the future but we're going to go ahead and click create wallet because we were able to choose from a list of addresses and follow on with the rest of the setup for ledger this is not related to chart wireless and this is all your responsibility so make sure you pay attention all right attempt number two connect wallet sue wallet finally geez louise connect say wallet address sign i'm gonna have to sign it on my hardware wallet warning transaction is not recognized enable blind signing so we probably need to go to settings, blind signing enabled, go back. All right, so now let's try that again. Make sure that everything is good. Sue wallet. Yep, everything is connected. All right, cool. So wallet is connected. We got to continue on. So verify wallet by signing the transaction. So sign, some error occurred. Okay, so it kicked me out of the app for some reason. Let's try that again. Verify wallet sign all right there we go transaction not recognized transaction hash blind signing confirm boom now our wallet is verified and we can continue on with the registration process all right and our miner is detected it's showing up here we can see last scene all that good stuff so we could probably manage this miner and we could see some data some transactions some receiving all that good stuff availability nice nice noise continue on with re registration showing up in the bottom right all right there we go so top up your balance to continue. You should add the, or deposit on your balance. Register your miner with 4,000 4, 4, data credits, $40 fee, and add this these DC for network services and IoT automation data credits will be available on your account once uh, all test gateways go live. All right, so I uh, can't do anything. So top up. We we'll probably need to buy it, unfortunately. So we're going to buy it. With whatever preferred payment method you like, just make sure you get the credits. How many credits do we need anyways? It says 4,000. Register your miner with 4,000 data credits. So credit amount. So 4,000 data credits, which should be about 40 bucks. Data credits equal to $1 uh, cent. $1 cent. Data credits are non-refundable. All right, so let me go ahead and do this. Now you can see at the very top, we got 4,000 credits. So we should be able to continue on where we left off with the registration process. And to reinitiate that process, just click on gateways, select your gateway, click on continue registration. There it is, transfer 4,000 credits. Boom, done. Add your wallet for rewards. We already got our wallet address added. It's already connected, so next. And now we need to provide our installation, right? So this is where we get on the roof and take pictures of our installation. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to jump in Discord and just tell them. Like right now, I'm just testing out the functionality. It does look like everything is working. It is not DOA, which was the main point of my previous video. Um, and now we just need to continue with the installation on the roof, which I will put in a separate video and move forward. Now, when you're at this point, because I won't be able to move forward until the installation is actually done, uh, or the physical one is, we got to provide photos of the gateway. And you can see here in the picture, 
you know they got the picture of the gateway on the roof and then on the pole and everything connected uh they got lightning arresters surge protectors the whole nine yards step four set antenna settings and approximate direction of the antenna installation height above the ground measure or guesstimate you know uh, your roof height or you know plus the pole or whatever extension you have connected to the antenna type omnidirectional comes with the gateway so it's, it's exactly what we got with the gateway so we just got to continue on to the rest of the steps and then send the verification which is where they review the photos the configuration the setup and all that stuff um, and then go through the actual validation, I guess you could say. And then we'll be able to monitor everything directly through our dashboard. So while this is the end of this video, there are still steps I need to do, which I will follow up in the future. If there are any questions, you can contact them uh, via help at chirpwireless.io. Um, otherwise, they got a great Discord. A lot of people are in there. Uh, and you just wait for approval. And then continue to monitor your gateway through your actual dashboard okay so right now i'm gonna leave it here and that's where i'm gonna leave you for today's video i thank you so much for hanging out with us do me a favor hit the like button on the way out make sure to get subscribed hit notification to stay up to date especially for updates on the actual installation and setup of this particular unit and i will keep you guys posted as much as possible but besides all that you just have yourself a wonderful day as always take care i'll catch you in the next one